The Money Show. Business Books. I'll tell Business Book this evening, and before I get there, if you missed the first 15 minutes of the show this evening, you missed an illuminating interview with a man called Zunaid Moti. Zunaid Moti, the founder of the Moti Group, um, it was interesting. I found it illuminating. Um, it, Zunaid Moti was charming. Um, he was um, sounded like a nice enough bloke. Um, I expressed concern at the company he keeps. Um, he would perhaps do the same with me. Um, but his is a more public um, arrangement in terms of the business arrangements that he has and the sort of uh, dealings that he has with different people and different heads of state in different countries and allegations are made that he has an inappropriately close relationship with some heads of state and though that has led to compromise business decisions been made. It's something that he denies and he denied it vociferously this evening as he got a bit agitated with the line of questioning. Sadly, we ran out of time in terms of what we can and can't do in within the limitations of the show. But it struck me that there was a wonderful juxtaposition uh, and a wonderful uh, sort of uh, congruence with our show this evening because Ian Mann, the managing director at Gateway's Business Consultants, quite coincidentally, has chosen a book this evening by a man called Henry Cloud. The book is called Trust. Now, here's the thing about trust. When somebody you trust is accused of doing something wrong, you're more likely to give them the benefit of the doubt. If there is sufficient information for you, or you've had a personal experience of somebody and you have reason to not trust them, for them to regain that trust is practically impossible. You, you, know, you may say, I forgive you. I understand where you were coming from. But do you ever trust somebody who has breached trust with you ever again? I don't think you do. You may want to. You may feel bad the fact that you don't trust them because they may have made up. But there's always just something. There's a niggle at the back of your mind. Once trust is broken in any relationship, it's done. Um, this book, Ian Man, talk to me about trust and Henry Cloud, the psychologist, the leadership expert to managing successful relationships. Henry Cloud is a psychiatrist, and he's he's been consulting to businesses for many years. And I've read a number of books that he's written. Every one is more brilliant than the last one. He's he's really really insightful. There must be probably thirty thousand books on trust on Amazon. I think <laughs> this is I haven't read all thirty thousand. The ones I've read, I think this is the most useful one. And I'll tell you why. It gives you a model of how to work out whether you can trust somebody or not. It gives you a model of what you can. That same model can be used for how you can recreate trust again. Because trust is incredibly important. And the, our real problem is that if you don't have a formula, if you don't have a structure, you have difficulty distinguishing trustworthy from untrustworthy people. Now, for this, it's, it's very difficult um, to deal with people if you don't know whether you can trust them and you can't. There are infinite ways in which you can be betrayed, but the pain is exactly the same in all, all cases. You're hurt, you're betrayed, you're disillusioned, all the other things you mentioned before. If you look at the dictionary definition of, of, of trust, it's, it's quite misleading. Dictionary definition generally is a belief that, somebody, that someone is good and honest and won't harm you. That's not enough. And I think that when we know what trust is, it'll be easier to build it, to know whether you should enter into a relationship, I think even to repair it afterwards. Let me just introduce you to the six, the five different parts that he says are absolutely essential. I'm going to give you the headlines because I think this is such an important book. His very first issue is understanding. It's the first un essential of trust. Try and imagine that you are um, an FBI hostage negotiator. And a bomber is, um, is got 24 customers in the bank and he's wearing a vest. And the police say to him, somebody's going to come and talk to you, talk with you, and the person they've chosen is Bruce Whitfield. And when you Everybody's there, dead. Everyone's dead, Ian. I'm sorry about this, but the story doesn't end well. <laughs> Perhaps choose a new negotiator. But anyway, let's carry on. Let's pretend. Okay, we, we're pretending. So there you are. You go into the, you go in there and you say, you're a rational man. You say, what are you thinking? This is stupid. It won't end well. There's no way out here. You can end up dead. Take their best off and just do the right thing. Get to, you, if you want somebody to trust you, you don't convince them that you're right, you're smart, or you're trustworthy. It's much, much more than that. If in a negotiation a hostage situation, you have to win their trust. One of the things that Carl Rogers proved so brilliantly was that he could get clinical results by only listening to other people, to his clients, 
and listening in a way that mirrored what they felt and what they experienced, that they felt deeply heard. If the person you're dealing with doesn't get you, that you have a feeling that they really don't understand what's important to me, why, the, why this business matters, I can't trust you. And one of the essential parts of trust is, does the person really get you? They don't get you, you'll find that you, and he opens his book with a, uh, an, an account he had with one of his clients. And I think they employed him to to help the um, this new CEO who was, didn't, they didn't feel good about. And at the end of the day, it was only boiled down to one thing. They didn't believe that he actually understood what their business meant to them, and therefore how they wanted him to treat their business. So the first step in trusting anybody, do they actually get you? It's not just that they're, that they're smart, doesn't mean anything else. The most important thing is that they get you. Here's the second one. You've got to be really sure that the person has, this, has motives that matter to you. The, the, if you. If the person has your best interests at heart, genuinely has your best interests, you don't have to worry. You can actually be careless, no, careless, right? Free of care. You can be careless if I know that the motivations that the other person has are, are, are what matters to me. Now, if you, you just take this into the, in the workplace. If you, can you imagine if staff asked each other, how is the quality of my work affecting you? How's my timing affecting you or anybody else in our team? When people ask that question, and, and they're asking it because they genuinely want to know, there's something about them which goes beyond um, uh, living in accord with company policies, they deeply care. The motive that they have is that they want to do the right thing. Real trust transcends rules. Um, rules are not powerful enough. And the sort of things that cause trust to happen is love, obviously. Um, but when there's a commitment, commitment could be anything from you and I in, in business together and we're going to make this happen. Or it could be from care or could, could be from compassion. But if the motive that person has for wanting to work with you is not is not a motive that matters to you and that matters deeply to them, it's probably somebody that you'll never be able to say, when I deal with that person, I can be careless. The third characteristic, and this is one which is most people just focus on instantly, is um, does this person have character? Now, what we, what we mean by that is, would he lie? Would he cheat? Is he honest? Is he is he hardworking? Well, character alone is not enough. A person can be somebody who would never lie, never cheat, never let you down. They're smart, they're honest, and they're capable, but they're absolutely impossible to work with. <laughs> you know, you can you can find somebody with integrity, but they're controlling, they're perfectionistic, they're unorganized, or they're without er empathy, or they're arrogant. They still got character. So. Character alone, which is what we usually say, I can trust him because he's of good character, that isn't enough. You need the understanding, you need the motive as well. There's two other parts of notes around this one that we can just discuss the whole thing. He says that we 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 have we cannot believe that that if somebody doesn't have the ability, we can trust them. Just think of family businesses. How many people how many family businesses promote their own family? Because they say we can trust him. Yeah, well, huge. I can trust him. I, huge. And and you've seen, you know, of, of listed companies where people have trusted family members, they should never have trusted them. They can trust them not to lie or cheat. Not, well, that's what, but they don't have the ability. They don't have the ability, you cannot trust them. You've probably seen, I've had experience of this as well, where friends have so much fun together. They've got the same values. They're both hardworking. They wish they could work together and they realize when once the business starts, that their, their abilities don't match, their abilities don't fill the gaps that are necessary. And they probably wish they'd done more evaluation as to whether the person was yeah. suitable to trust once they've given all that. So we need to know that the person has, has understanding, has m right motives, has the right character, and has the right ability. But the last part is this. We can't, we can't trust people on promise. Um, you know, if you think of an extreme case, somebody's an addict. They say, I promise I won't get stoned again. I'm sure they could well be serious, but a promise isn't enough. A liar doesn't suddenly start telling the truth. Somebody who's a non-listener doesn't all of a sudden make other people feel understood. 
And if somebody is untrained, inexperienced, they, they're not going to be able to deal with complex problems. So we, we have to worry about um, the, if we want an objective reason to trust, they've got to, they've got to prove it. They have to have a track record. But, but there's, there's, a, there's a saying that goes something along those don't trust me, don't, don't judge me by what I say, judge me by what I do. It's really the only exactly mechanism that. by which you can decide whether or not to trust somebody is by their actions, not by their words. You, the, it's absolutely spot on. The, the, the um, validating the track record seems like an absolute no brainer. But you, I've seen this over and over again. I'm sure you've seen this as well. We, we trust people who are unproven. Even worse, sometimes we trust people whose track record is really bad. And so for some reason, uh, some reason we think that they, 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 it's going to be great this time. And most often when we, when we are prepared to over, overlook their, their lack of a track record, it's because there's something else that we, we, we like about them. Maybe it's their strength or their likability or their charm. The fact is, if they don't have a track record, they don't have ability, they don't have character, they don't have a good motive, they don't really get you. They cannot be trusted, whether it's in business or in a relationship. So back to the book, because the book is talking about those principles. Henry Cloud basically helps us to identify the, the, the mechanisms by which we can identify whether or not somebody is going to be trustworthy and whether they will perceive us, I suppose, as trustworthy too. Indeed, indeed. And, and if you run this through people you do business with, um, you'll, be, you'll be able to say, I don't know why I don't feel comfortable with that person. Run through these five things and you'll see exactly which one's missing. Ian Mann, the wisdom of Ian Mann and the wisdom of the books he reads, regular book reviewer on The Money Show, the managing director at Gateway's Business Consultants. Uh, coming up in a few minutes' time, a brand new feature on The Money Show and the person who inspired it, the joy of inspiring an idea is you get to be the first victim, not victim, what's the word I'm looking for? Guest, guest, that's the word I'm looking for, guest on The Money Show.